today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. Now we've entered into a new season, a new era, and now we're going to start seeing hundredfold testimonies. Not occasionally is going to be commonplace. It's going to be commonplace. Hallelujah. The message translation for Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just, it says, ill-gotten wealth ends up with good people. The passion translation says, it's treasured up for the righteous. And the Amplified once again says, and eventually it will come into their hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, go with me to the book of James, James chapter 5. I'm still on the introduction. I ain't got to the sermon yet. James chapter 5, and let's look at verse 1. Go to now, ye rich man, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Listen at the last part of that verse. You have heaped together, or heap treasure together for the last days. Now, that could have a two-fold meaning, meaning, first of all, uh, this is coming to an end, how you're getting this. But the second part of that two-fold meaning is what you've been heaping up is reserved for the just in the last days. Are there any just in the place tonight? In other words, God is saying, oh, you, you, you've been heaping it up. you got treasuries of wealth, but you're not going to enjoy it in the last days. It'll be taken from you. <laughs> Can I give you a testimony? Yes. Not your head, yes, I'm going to anyway. <laughs> there was a man that actually called Brother Copeland back in uh, 1981. And he asked Brother Copeland for my phone number. Brother Copeland called me and says, all right, if I give this gentleman your number. He said, you've met him before, but you don't know him real well. But uh, he called and he's in town. And he wants to know if he can have your phone number. I said, sure. So he called and he said, Jerry, uh, can you meet me out at Meacham Airport? He said, I'm on my way to Tulsa. I just flew in from Denver. I'm on my way to Tulsa. And, uh, but uh, I have something I wanted to bring you. And I called Brother Copeland because I didn't have your number. And, uh, and, and he told me that he called you and asked you to meet me at the airport. So I walk up to his airplane and he comes out of it. He's sitting in the cockpit. He steps out of it with a brown paper bag in his hand. He said, here, take this. I said, what is it? He said, I don't want to recede for it. Don't ask me where I got it. <laughs> God told me it belongs to you. He said, look, open the bag and look at it. I opened it up and I closed it up real quick. It looked like a drug deal going down here. <laughs> now, I don't know about drugs, but that's the way Jesse DePlantis told me you do it. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I was a little bit embarrassed, man. I closed that bag real quick. It was full of cash. I closed that bag real quick and gave it back to him. I said, he said, no, it's yours. God told me to bring it to you. Don't ask me where I got it, and I don't want a receipt for it. So he climbed back up in the airplane, shut the door, and I'm standing there with his paper bag full of cash. And finally, he starts taxing off, and I go back to my car, and I've got it in the front seat, and I don't have a clue how much is in there. So I drive home. I get home with this paper sack. Carolyn said, what's in the bag? I opened it up. She said, where did you get that? I told her the story. It was $30,000 cash in that bag. And she said, uh, and I told her, I said, he said, it's mine. He doesn't want to receive for it. And he, wouldn't, he told me not to ask him where he got it. Well, years later, T.L. Osborne was having a, uh, uh, he was selling all of his antique Lincoln collection 
at an auction in Tulsa. And he asked me to come because he knew I uh, was into classic cars and all. And he said, I want you to come be my prayer partner. I'm believing God for the best for these cars, so I'm putting it into world evangelism. So I flew to Tulsa and, and uh, uh, was with Brother Osborne. And this man showed up. He was a businessman, had car leaderships and all that kind of thing. And he was a businessman. And we greeted one another. And uh, he said, uh, did you ever wonder where I got that money? I said, oh, yeah, I wondered, but you told me not to ask. He said, uh, well, sometime later, I heard you preach about this. Uh, I, before I gave you that, I heard you preach about this wealth transfer. The wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. He said, uh, um, I won it in a card game in Las Vegas. <laughs> and he said, the moment I won it, the Lord said, that belongs to Jerry Seville. Take it to him. <laughs> I said, when are you going back to Vegas? <laughs> Well, the wealth of the sinner was laid up for the just. You know, sometimes you get up in the morning when this is a revelation to you, you just walk around with your hands out like this. Amen. Now, look at this. James chapter 5 once again. Now, look at verse 4. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of therein of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Seboeth. That's not the Lord of Sabbath. It's the Lord of Seboeth. And Seboeth means host or angels. Okay. Now, if you look at that very closely, James, by the Spirit of God, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, is saying there are two cries going on in the world right now. Number one is the cry of the wages that have been held back from the righteous or the harvest that's been held back from the righteous. Are there any sowers in the house? Yeah. Have you reaped all your harvest so far? Yeah. Then it's being held back because the Bible makes it very clear. Uh, Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you're not reaping what you sowed, then that is a violation of spiritual law. So it's being held back by somebody. As Brother Hagin used to say, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Huh? There is a cry taking place right now. And it's your harvest that rightfully belongs to you. Now notice there's a second cry. The harvest is crying and the people that it rightfully belongs to should be crying. And I'm not talking about tears of sorrow. I'm talking about a, a, a bold command. I want my harvest and I want it now. It doesn't belong to you, Satan. It doesn't belong to the wicked. I'm crying out for my harvest. And at the same time, your harvest is crying out, let me go, let me get into the hands where it belongs. I hear, I hear my harvest saying, I belong to Jerry Savelle, now release me. And whatever your name is, your harvest is crying out for you because that's where it rightfully belongs. I remember uh, after the Lord showing me this a number of years ago, I had... <clears throat> My wife and I had bought uh, uh, some property on a lake not too far from Fort Worth called Lake Granberry. And we bought a house down there. And, and then as our family grew, we bought the house next door so everybody would have a place to come and relax and sleep and all that because our first house had gotten too small. You got kids and then you get grandkids and all that, you know. Well, we like water sports. I grew up water skiing. I like jet skis. I like fishing. I like being on the water. I like being on the lake. So we had, you know, acquired over a period of time. My wife, she likes, she likes a deck boat. She don't like going fast. I said, Carolyn, and I have a speed boat that was made, built for me. 
one of my former employees uh, always had a dream of building racing boats. And when he left me, he started that business and his son won a national championship in one of his boats. And he called me one day and said, Brother Jerry, I'm building you a boat. I said, help yourself. <laughs> it's fast. It's fast. I mean, I've, I've been uh, 95 on the water in that boat and it still had throttle. And my wife won't even get in it. She wants, she wants to ride around in a deck boat about 15 miles an hour with all the family on there eating a hot dog. I want to blow them out of the water. I'm go right past them, you know. So we got this deck boat, we got this speed boat, we got these jet skis, fishing boat, you know. And I need a place to keep all this. So I drove down there one day just to spend a couple of days in between meetings. And there was a guy on the other side of my property, one, one house between us. He was building a new uh, metal building next door to his house. And I told my wife, I said, now that's what I need. I need a building that size, just like that. And we spent a couple of days down there. And then the next time I got to go back, he had it built. He just finished building it. And I drove up and he's got a for sale sign. So I walked down there and I said, are you selling your property? He said, yeah, my, my wife's folks are real ill and we need to move. We need to sell our property and, and move out somewhere else uh, close to them so we can take care of them. He said, I'm selling the house. I'm selling the the building. I said, well, I don't really need your house, but I'd like to have that building. And so I asked him what he wanted for it, and he told me, and so I, I bought it. And uh, it, it was perfect for us, you know. And come to find out, later he said, I sold that preacher, that building, for a whole lot less than what I had put in it to build it. <laughs> when I heard that, I thought, yeah, the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. <laughs> it just keeps working. It just keeps working. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So notice your harvest, while you're sitting here listening to me, is crying out for you. But are you crying out for it? No, most people don't. Because if their harvest doesn't come, you know, in the next hour or so after they sowed it, or it doesn't come before dark, or it doesn't come before the next morning, they tend to forget about it. How much harvest do you suppose you're entitled to that you gave up on? The harvest is crying and the people that it rightfully belongs to should be crying. And when they do, God is going to cause a divine connection, praise God. Your harvest is going to wind up in your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord another shout if you believe it. Praise God. Amen. Now, the message translation says that, that the harvest or the wages and the people that it rightfully belongs to, the harvesters, the message translation says they are crying out for judgment. They are crying out for judgment. Judgment means discerning right from wrong, good from evil, and correcting it. See, it's not right that your harvest remains in the hands of the wicked. It's not right that our harvest remains in the hands of Satan. Cry out for judgment. Amen. Cry out for judgment. Amen. Wealth, according to God's word, doesn't belong to the wicked. It belongs to the righteous, primarily for the purpose of being able to finance the gospel in these last days. Because it's going to take more money in these last days to get the gospel out to the masses than it's ever taken before. Everything's... I mean, we just recently put two brand new engines on our Cessna 5, Citation 5, and it cost three times what it used to cost just a few years ago, didn't it, Brad? We could have done that for $350,000 an engine just a short time ago. Then it went up to $750,000 an engine. We just spent a million five on two engines. 
it takes money to preach the gospel in these last days. And God's not having to invent more money. It's out there, but it's in the wrong hands. I said it's out there, but it's in the wrong hands. Come on, put your hands up like this and say, God, God. your word says the wealth of the sinner (laughs) belongs to the righteous. I'm the righteous. I'm crying out for my harvest. Harvest, come to me now in Jesus' name and give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I sense in my spirit some of you before the end of this month are going to reap harvest that's been held back for a long time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, that's my introduction. Now, hey, pastor said I could just preach all night if I wanted to. Now, go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read the entire story. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, it actually, the story begins in verse 17. And it's talking about this rich young ruler who came to Jesus asking him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know the story. Jesus talked to him and said, you know, uh, whatsoever you... Uh, he told him what to do. And the man said, I've done that from my youth. Jesus said, but you lack one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor. And the Bible says the man was grieved at that saying because he had great possessions. Well, actually, if you follow it, uh, yes, he did have great possessions, but even more than that, his great possessions had him because he couldn't give any of it away. That's how you can tell if you have possessions or they have you when you can't give them away. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Okay. Now, notice here, this man had a problem selling what he had and giving to the poor. And Jesus said, that's the one thing you lack. Now, notice if you follow this story, uh, Peter and the other disciples, they were amazed at what he said to this man. They said, Master, we've, we've given all to serve you. And here's what Jesus said to them. Look at verse 30. <clears throat> well, it's verse 29. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold. He shall receive a hundredfold. Say that out loud. Say it boldly. He shall receive a hundredfold. And look at the next phrase. Now, in this time, not when we get to heaven, in this time. Another translation says, in this age. <coughs> Amen. Now, I remember a number of years ago, there was a meeting called for a lot of ministers who were preaching on the hundredfold. Myself, Brother Copeland, Brother Capps, Fred Price, different ones. And we were all called into a meeting and they were going to endeavor to correct us. So Brother Copeland and Jesse Duplantis and myself all flew up together in Brother Copeland's plane to this meeting. And on the way up there, uh, we were talking about it because we knew that's what they were going to challenge us about. They told us in advance. And so I just said to Brother Copeland and Jesse, I don't intend to open my mouth that whole time. I'm just going to listen. Brother Copeland said, me too. Jesse said, me too. So we went to just listen. Okay. Then 
the MC of the meeting made this statement. Now, when Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 that you shall receive a hundredfold, he wasn't speaking literally. And then the guy went on to say, uh, he wasn't speaking literally that you'll receive a hundredfold. He said that was just a metaphor. Jesus wasn't talking about literally a hundredfold. It was just a metaphor. Well, that's when I couldn't stand anymore. I raised my hand, asked if I could say something. I said, sir, would you mind telling me what a field full of metaphor looks like? <laughs> Remember that? He said, what? I said, I want to know what a field full of metaphor looks like. He said, I don't understand. I said, read Genesis 26. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped a hundredfold in the same year. Now tell me what a field full of metaphor looks like. Amen? If Jesus didn't mean what he said, then somebody needs to let him know. And I'm not going to be the one to do it. I believe he meant what he said. And notice he said they will receive a hundredfold now in this age. Now here's the word the Lord gave me for 2023. He said, tell the people beginning in Tampa, Florida. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Are you ready? Get your pen out. Write it down. Keep it before you. I want to get a copy of the message later or download it, however you do. Here's what the Lord said to me. Tell the people that 2023 will be known as the year of the maximum. The year, wait a minute. The year of the maximum, the year of the highest level attainable. The year of the maximum and the year of the highest level attainable. Now, I was taught by the Lord in the early days of my ministry that hundredfold, you know, 30-fold is good. 60-fold is better. But hundredfold is God's best. And the Lord said to me in the early days of my ministry, and I've been preaching about this all these years and got a lot of flack for it, even from so-called word of faith pastors, you can't go around telling people they'll get a hundredfold. Well, Jesus did, and I'm quoting him. I, I'm not reading from First Jerry, I'm reading from Mark. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. Jesus even said, I say nothing, I do nothing, except I hear my father say it and see my father do it. So where's he getting his inspiration? From God Almighty. Now, if he didn't mean that, he shouldn't have said it because he doesn't waste words. A hundredfold. Now in this age, folks, this age is about over. God is, is, is rapidly moving forward Amen. We could very well be the last generation before the appearing of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's got to come to pass. And I believe I'm going to live to see it because it's beginning now. No, I take that back. Uh, it's already begun. It's begun years ago, but it's been picking up momentum but now we've entered into a new season, a new era, and now we're going to start seeing hundredfold testimonies. Not occasionally, it's going to be commonplace. It's going to be commonplace. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord your best shout. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hundred 
Bold means maximum results. That's what it means, maximum results. Did you know that your harvest is crying out for you? What could you do right now if you received a hundredfold return on every financial seed you've ever sown? Today's special offer, the Maximum Level Package, contains Jerry Savelle's brand new prophetic message, 2023, the year of the maximum, the highest level attainable, and his revealing book, Principles of Supernatural Increase. Every seed you've sown is meant to produce a harvest. That harvest wants to be in your hands. In this package, Jerry teaches how to increase supernaturally, how to believe for a hundredfold return, how to grow to a higher level of faith, and the two cries of the harvest. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Maximum Level Special Package. Discover how to walk in a new season of Maximum Harvest. Average and mediocre doesn't have to be the norm. Order now and move into the Maximum Level this year. Well, if you enjoyed today's message, let me encourage you to stay tuned for next week's program because we're not through talking about this subject 2023, the year for the maximum and the year for the highest level attainable. You know, some people think that's not possible. But let me remind you, Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. Are you a believer? Then if you are a believer and you have faith in your heart, well, that's, that's kind of a ridiculous statement because if you are a believer, you do have faith in your heart. The Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So let me just say this to you. You've got the faith that it takes for maximum results. So all things are possible to him that believeth. So why don't you just go for it? Determine right now that 2023 is going to be your year for maximum results and it's going to be your year for the highest level attainable. God will work with you. The Holy Spirit will work with you. The Word of God will work with you. You don't need anything else. Just determine you can do it. God's for you, not against you, and he'll help you make it happen. Amen. So 2023, the year of the maximum and the year of the highest level attainable. That's the title of this new three CD series. I want to encourage you to order it right away. You won't regret it. It's going to be powerful study for you. And I know that you will want to listen to it over and over again. Then right along with it, my book on the principles of supernatural increase and as I've said before, if you're experiencing maximum results, then you are also experiencing supernatural increase. That's God's best. God wants to increase you more and more. The Bible says in Psalm 112, 115 rather, and he's going to increase you more and more, you and your children. That means you can have maximum results. Thank you for joining me. And I want to encourage you to join me again next week for more Adventures in Faith. 